In 2016, Donald Trump said something astounding. We won with poorly educated. I love the poorly educated. He was referring to polling data that indicated that the less educated a voter was, especially if they're white, the more likely they were to support him. That was seven years ago. Fast forward to today, and this idea has become a core part of the GOP's election strategy. And the big question I've had for a while is why? From Virginia to Texas to Tennessee to the presidency, Republicans are actively changing school curriculum in ways that make American kids, your kids, dumber. We will make sure that parents can send their kids to school to get an education not an indoctrination. Texas libraries are becoming discipline centers. Oklahoma is banning sex ed. West Virginia University is proposing a shutdown of nearly 10% of its academic offerings, including all of its foreign language programs. Like, I'm old enough to remember when it was cool to speak other languages. Y también es mi escuelas. I think I found the answer in a very strange place. This YouTube video made for kids. It was actually made by one of the organizations helping with this effort, Prager U. Dennis Prager, founder of Prager U. Prager is a highly learned, erudite individual. Dennis Prager is a radio show host who founded Prager U. The right wing nonprofit, Prager University. It describes its mission as fighting back against the left wing propaganda pushed on children in school. Stick around and I'll show you one of the most egregiously deceptive videos I've ever seen from them. A video that is now an approved resource for Florida's Department of Education standards. Like, that's the craziest part. It's, it's that students will be learning this information as a fact. And I think it's the perfect peek behind the curtains of their motivation. So, let's dig in. In this cartoon, two kids, Layla and Leo, are time-traveling students who go back to the year 1852 for a chat with the famous historical abolitionist, Frederick Douglass. And they're talking to him about abolition. Prager U describes this video as an accurate and honest look at slavery. That's a lie and you know it. Without going through the entire video, there is one clip that is exceptionally misleading and deserves, in my opinion, to be called out. In, in fact, there is something philosophical, almost doctrinal, happening in this video that I think reveals their goals. This particular clip is about three minutes into the video. Cartoon Frederick Douglass is explaining that part of early America, the South specifically, was dependent on slave labor. So the founding fathers knew that they couldn't outlaw slavery without potentially losing their support for independence from Britain. The southern colonies were dependent on slave labor, and they wouldn't have joined a union that had banned it. The absolutely insane irony here, historical fact check, is that the entire colony participated in slavery at the founding of America. So, so this framing is dishonest at best. Are you okay with that? I'm certainly not okay with slavery, but the founding fathers made a compromise to achieve something great, the making of the United States. Boom, there it is. I think embedded in this line is the organizing motivation for the factually inaccurate framing of history in this video and the larger push to undermine education in America. First of all, the founding fathers themselves weren't innocent compromisers. Most of them owned slaves. The worst part is that they were educated enough to know that it was wrong and did it anyway. They weren't the morally upstanding citizens Prager U would want you to believe them to be. More on that part later. Thomas Jefferson, one of the most well-known founding fathers and the third president of the United States, is a prime example of this. On one hand, he is renowned for pinning the Declaration of Independence, which famously states that all men are created equal and endowed with unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. On the other hand, Jefferson himself was a slave owner who, who not only profited from the institution of slavery, but also never liberated his own slaves, even at his death. For all he did to help establish the USA, he should also be remembered for perpetuating a system that was antithetical to the very principles he pinned. But founding fathers aside, most importantly, to pretend that Frederick Douglass was okay in any way with the institution of slavery is lunacy, lunacy that serves a specific purpose. Okay, buckle up. Let's get philosophical. The French philosopher Roland Barthes. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. If I'm saying it wrong, hey, I was educated here in America. Let me let me Google this real quick. Let me Google how to say this. Barthes. Barthes. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to participate in that. I'm French. 
Why do you think I have this outrageous accent, you silly king? Both wrote about exactly what is happening in this PragerU video way back in the 1950s in his book Mythologies. He describes the political and social value of stories or mythology as a kind of tool. He argues that the stories we tell ourselves and others about the world around us are often designed to be simple, easy to understand, and convey a specific, unchallengeable message. As an American, the mythology of America's founding story is full of larger than life characters who are supposed to be held in hallowed esteem. The American mythology is a story of a bunch of white dudes doing the best thing ever in the history of the world, one nation under God. And to challenge that story, no matter how legitimate the challenges might be, is often perceived as a transgression. There are so many amazing things about America. The crazy part is that the real Frederick Douglass occupied exactly that space. He was a ferocious and ardent critic of the American myth. In his most famous speech, What to the Slave is the Fourth of July, he said this, Oh, had I the ability and could I reach the nation's ear, I would today pour out a fiery stream of biting ridicule, blasting reproach, withering sarcasm, and stern rebuke. For it is not light that is needed, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. Prager U knows this speech exists. They set this video in the year 1852, the same year that Frederick Douglass gave this speech. They have Douglass standing in front of the very building where he gave the speech. They literally quote this speech in another part of the video. Great streams are not easily turned from channels worn deep in the course of ages. Huh? This isn't a matter of misinterpretation. The real Frederick Douglass just doesn't fit their agenda, so they have to lie. They have to create a caricatured version of this real historical figure to fit their specific story of who and what America is. That French philosopher that I mentioned earlier, Roland he actually dug into this very phenomenon in that same book, Mythology. He described an image on the front of a Parisian magazine. The image depicts a black boy in French military regalia saluting the French flag. On its face, it means something simple, but the subtext, Both explains, is deeply, deeply significant. This image is designed to depict patriotism, a person saluting the flag. Great. But Both argues that the specifics of who is engaging in this patriotic display matters. A black or African boy from a country likely plundered and colonized by French imperial power. In this way, the image tells a deeper story. It says, see, even those we've colonized love France. Look at the zeal shown by this black boy in serving his so-called oppressors. Think about the downstream implications for the viewer who accepts this image and its underlying story as reality without interrogation. They no doubt find it difficult many years later to empathize with the protests and critiques from people who look like this boy. Protesters are demanding that the police be abolished. Well, Clint, these local activists want to abolish the police. They're claiming systematic oppression and want the US system torn down. What is going on? Things are so weird right now. The work of myth or story would have already crystallized an expectation that Africans from countries colonized or exploited by France should simply be grateful and salute the flag like that little boy way back when. Even if the expectation isn't that everyone should behave like him, he's held up as an aspirational figure. Well, your way is definitely better. In that same way, PragerU is setting up an expectation. By depicting a black man, the most photographed and well-known black man of the 19th century. As an apologist for the evils of the Founding Fathers, they are teaching a very specific myth or story, one that takes aim at modern protest movements by framing them as crazy, childish, and out of step with the way change was made in the past. I mean, who better to absolve America of its original sin than its most well-known abolitionist? And like I always say, Knowledge is the pathway from slavery to freedom. This is what I mean when I say they want your kids to be dumb. That's not who Frederick Douglass was, and we have a deep well of his writing and speeches to prove it. They are actively teaching something harmful and misleading on purpose. Zooming out, there are dozens of these videos, all produced from the vantage of that myth. America is the best. Capitalism is wonderful. Shut up and be grateful. 
And PragerU isn't the only organization in the curriculum making business. Other organizations are taking these exact concepts, these exact myths, and exporting them across the country. Conservatives aren't just interested in making sure your kids don't learn things. They want to make sure your kids don't learn how to learn. The role of these myths are to replace nuance and curiosity with hubris and certainty. I think terms like woke do the exact same thing. They, they are designed to destroy the seed of curiosity before it even has a chance to germinate. And, and while I understand the utility of certainty, I find it to be the most boring posture a new learner can take. Curiosity and thoughtful interrogation have animated some of the best and brightest minds America has ever produced. And it seems that maybe that's simply not the country or world that conservatives want us to live in anymore. Okay, I'm gonna call it right there. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. This is just the beginning of the conversation. So let's chat, tell me what you think. Of course, drop a like, of course, subscribe. As always, I'm grateful that you're here, my friends. 